Hey guys and welcome back to my channel that is all about artificial intelligence, machine learning and technology in general. Today we're going to be talking about how hash functions work and how they are important for both computer science and the blockchain. As a computer scientist, hashes is something we talk about very often. Hashes are used for something that is called hash tables, which is a data structure, which is very good for fast lookup. But now, with the rise of blockchain, people are talking about hashes quite a lot, but most of you are probably quite confused. What is a hash? I know it's important for the blockchain, I know it's important for programming, but what is it? So this video aims to explain that for you, so I'm gonna go into detail like what a hash function is, what kind of algorithm is it, and what, what it means. So a hash function is an algorithm that you give some data. You give it an input, it might be this big, it might be this big. We're talking about numbers of character here most usually. Uh, so it can be 0, 1, A, B, you know, and maybe 14,000 characters. And regardless of the size of input, we want to generate an output of a fixed size. And that is very important that we have a fixed size, but we, we want to be able to compare this, right? We want to be able to give it any data with any size, we want to squeeze it with our algorithm or expand it, depending on how big the data is, and give it a very fixed size that we then later can use for comparisons. So for the blockchain, for example, you might have a block that is filled with transactions. And if you don't know about blockchain or Bitcoin, that's no worries. Just listen to the explanation here and you will be fine. Uh, so if you have a block with a lot of transactions, you have a lot of public keys, you have a lot of transaction information, it's a very large block. We want to be able to take this block and all of the data it consists of, all the numbers and all the characters, and we want to squeeze it together into a fixed size hash. And that makes sense, right? Because we want to be able to compare these blocks, right? We want to be able to see if someone has altered with a block. So we want to, from this block, we want to be able to hash it to a value and we want to check that value and see if it's valid or not in the future. And also we wanted to take the, you know, the hash from each block to the next block so we can get the chain there with the hashes. So that is very important. So that's why hashes are very important for the blockchain and also why they are important to computer science in general. So hashes are very important, not only for the blockchain and not only for hash tables, but are used very commonly in computer science in various aspects. They could, for example, be used to check if an element is inside of a very large number of elements. So say you have millions and millions and millions of elements that are very large and you want to check is this very element in this collection of elements, you can use things such as a Bloom filter, which is a very cool data structure as well. But for you to understand more how a hash functions work, I want to give you an example. So MD5 is a very commonly used hash function. And if you look at the picture here, we can see how it takes some data and it actually creates a hash from it. And this hash can later be used for comparison. So for example, say you are, for me now, I have an Android phone. Say I'm updating my Android phone. I'm updating the operating system in my phone. So if I'm downloading the software for that uh, off the internet somewhere, I want to make sure that I have the right file, right? I, maybe some hacker have put up a file that is not correct and maybe I'm installing some virus now on an operating system. So what we could do here, for example, is that Google will upload their file here for download by everyone. And it, they will also say, this is the MD5 checksum of this file. And what that means is that they take the software and they run the MD5 uh, hash algorithm on that software. And the, you know, the software is only ones and zeros and characters and numbers. So it's a long, long, long a string of integers and characters, and they run the algorithm on that very software and out comes a checksum. And that is the hash function of the MD5 hash algorithm. What I then can do is download the software to my computer, run the MD5 algorithm on the software, and check that the checksum I got from doing that is the same as the checksum that Google said is the correct one for the software. If they match, I know that I have the same software, I know that the software haven't been altered, because that is one of the major thing with hash algorithms, that given an input x, uh, you are creating a hash function, h of s, x, right? You, you say, think about it as a function in math, you know, uh, f of 1, and you put in 1 there, and you replace all the x's with a 1 instead. Here we have the hash algorithm, it's here, we put our data in it, and out comes some hash, right? So it's the same thing here. But given that we have the hash value of something, we should not be able to reconstruct the input that you know, computed that very hash value. So 
that is a very basis of the hash function. So for example here, the hacker shouldn't be able to just guess what the input of the software should be, how the software should, to, should look to create this very value of the, when they input this data into the hash function and they get a hash value, they shouldn't be able to create any input that creates the same output, right? So by doing this, I know that the software I have downloaded from Google is the correct one. So I don't need to be afraid of viruses as long as I trust Google. So if you check the image here once again, you can compare it, right? You can see that we, we run the hash algorithm on that very input and we got this hash value. And we can compare that to the hash value that the uh, author of the software gave us and we know that we have the right software. So as I mentioned here, it's very important for the hash function to be non-invertible. We shouldn't be able, if we have the hash value of something, we shouldn't be able to just guess the input to get that very hash value. That is a very bad thing because then we can fool it, right? Then we're able to create the hash value of anything and that would be quite useless. We want it to be sure in that way. We don't want people to just guess random input and get the correct hash value out from it. It should be very random to say the least. You shouldn't be able to guess the input to get a very specific output. Another very important thing of the hash function is that it is supposed to be deterministic. So if you always give it the same input, you should always get the same output. And that is very crucial. Otherwise, you know, if we take the comparison here again with the software, if it doesn't give the same output, giving the same input, I don't know if I have the right software. I need to be able to compare it between these two. So that's why that's important as well. Another very important thing is uniformity and that basically means if you think about my arm as an x-axis here and this axis is all of the possible outputs of the hash algorithm. So let's say that the hash algorithm can output something between 0 and 10 uh, then you know 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8 you know all the way to 10. So then if we give some input to it, let's say we give some input here and some input here, we don't want both of these to just get an output in the middle, right? We want it to be uniform. We want that given our input, we want the outputs to be evenly distributed along the x-axis of all the possible values. We don't just want them to be clogged in the middle, that would be kind of useless. We want to have all possible values here of our output. So this was a fast description about how so this was a fast, so this was a swift introduction for you on hash algorithms and they are very much commonly used and I hope now that you have a better understanding of how they work, especially if you come from the blockchain community, you have heard about hashes, you're like, what the fuck is this? Now you actually can know. So now with the knowledge you have, I think you can go on Wikipedia and read more and understand just about everything, which is kind of cool given that you watch this video, that's probably gonna end up like five minutes. So if you like this video, hit the like button down here to your right and hit the subscribe button if you aren't already a subscriber. I upload videos like this daily to inform you about the latest things in AI, machine learning, blockchain, but also to educate you like in this video. And when you subscribe, hit the bell right next to it so you get updated, uh, you get actually updated and notified here on YouTube when I upload new videos, which is kind of cool so you don't miss out. So if you like my videos, you could consider supporting me on Patreon so I can spend more time doing this and less time doing other things because I really like talking to you guys and educating you about the stuff that I've spent most of my life studying. Uh, so consider that. You find me on Patreon at Oscar Olsen. Uh, it's a very cool page to get involved and have a nice contact as well. Uh, so maybe I'll see you there. So regardless if this is the first time that I talk to you or you know you followed me for a long time, I really hope that you learned something from this. And as always, I do also hope that you have an absolutely fantastic day and I'll talk to you soon again.